Assalamu alaikum and hello, my name is Asya Bajwa. Before I show you how I pack my painting, you need to know what really happens in the post office and how you should really pack your work. When I was to send my first painting to USA, I surfed everywhere on internet to find out the best way to pack it and all the suggestions were to pack it in a cardboard box or in a thermopore sheet. I did something like that but what happened? My painting was broken into three pieces. So I had to paint it again and send it again. But this time I was extra careful and I asked my other fellow artists how do they pack their paintings. They said that they pack it in a cardboard box and sometimes the painting is broken but mostly it is alright and it is safe. I was not ready to take any chance this time. So I took my new painting that was on a canvas and I covered it with an old painting of mine that was made on a hardboard and that was not enough for me. I ordered for a wooden box and I packed all this in a wooden box and I thought everything was perfect. But what happened this time? I received a letter from the post office saying that there was something forbidden in my parcel and I called them to inquire about it and they said that there was a there was an antique painting in my parcel. So I told them that I'm coming with a black spray and I'll cover that so-called antique painting with it. When we went to the post office, they took us to a place where mostly visitors are not allowed to go. And what I saw there was that there was a van and parcels were unloaded from it in really a bad way. So you can see that a parcel should be steady enough and it should be covered in such a way that it should be protected from rain, from bad weather, from mud, from anything. And if it is thrown from a van, it should be steady enough to hold it without destroying your actual painting inside. Then we were taken into a hall where there were huge tables and parcels were kept pretty nicely this time. These were perhaps the parcels that were to be dispatched. Imagine your canvas painting packed in a cardboard box placed under all these parcels like under many parcels. It cannot hold the weight. Then we were taken into another hall where there were huge tables and there were inspection persons who were opening parcels and taking out everything from every parcel and then packing it again. They were like checking if there's anything forbidden in that. From this you can see that your parcel should indicate how to open it and how to repack it. It should have all the instructions on it. Secondly, it should be packed in such a way that if it is opened, nothing is damaged and they can easily pack it in the same way that you did once. Also, there is a possibility that your items could get mixed with someone's parcel. So there should be address label on each and everything that you pack in your parcel. Now let me show you how I pack my painting. The first and the very important thing is to confirm address from the buyers because sometimes people sign up to a website and they don't fill the address form completely. They just leave it for a later time and then they forget. So I mostly take six prints of address label. And then I also take prints of all the instructions like fragile, like how to pack your painting and how to unpack it. Then I just flip my painting on a bubble wrap sheet and I cut it a little larger than the painting size. It depends on the thickness of your canvas, like the stretches. I cut the extra pieces of bubble wrap because we don't want to increase weight. We just want a perfect packing without increasing the weight of the parcel. So nothing extra should be there. Then I take a white cotton fabric and I cut it a little smaller than the bubble wrap sheet. Then I flip the painting on it. No need to iron that fabric because I'm going to stretch it anyway. I like to write my name, name of the painting, the date it was made, the material used for it my website address and things like that on the back side of the painting pretty compact i keep it compact and i use a permanent marker mostly but make sure the marker don't transfer on the front side of your painting once i write all this i paste the address on the back side using a transparent tape you need to write your address as well as the receiver's address plus some telephone numbers I like to seal it nicely to protect it from water or rain. Then I just wrap it with a bubble wrap and a white fabric sheet. 
just like you wrap a gift. You need a really good tape dispenser for this to save your time and a really good tape. The place where you pack your painting should be really clean so that your tape won't catch any dust. You can also place it on a table to pack it. If I have to pack multiple paintings in a parcel, I also attach another label which indicates that this is one of the five paintings or two of the three paintings. I attach that label both on front and the back side of painting. If my painting has some impasto or collage or modeling paste on it, I just use another piece of bubble wrap for extra protection of the painting surface. Also never forget to put a fragile label on your painting because they can never know that it is sensitive. Maybe somebody could put their elbow on top of it. So it's very important to tell them that this is fragile. Be careful. A drawing with such labels can always be helpful because they might not read it but they will notice the drawing. Or maybe if they understand different language then they can just get the idea of what you're trying to tell them. Now once the painting is packed it looks like this. Then I take the box and I paste the address label on top of it. Then I take some masking tape to indicate where the lid is. It is very important to tell them that the box has a lid because otherwise they can just tear it out and there will be no point of packing it like this. So on one side I write that open here with some arrows and on the back side I write that lid is on the other side. I like to cover it with a transparent tape as well. Now on the inner side I indicate how they should pack the painting. In this case paintings do not touch box walls so I indicate that in a drawing requesting them to take care of this and I also show them the right and the wrong way of doing it so that they can avoid the wrong way. Then I just take some thermopore sheets and I just cut them. The thermopore that I use or the thermocoal that I use it, it has no grains so it keeps everything very neat and tidy. You need a sharp cutter for it for sure. But be careful, take your time. The thermocol that I use, I get it free from the place where I buy the wood. And it is a soft one, so very good for this purpose. Now every shipping company has a limit for the length. The standard post that I use has a limit of 50 inches. This painting was 48 inches in length. So I tried to order the box in 49 inches so there was very little space in between the painting and the box. Now make sure that the box has no such thing that could harm you or the inspection persons or even the receiver. Once I cut the pieces of thermopore, I just take two sided tape and I attach it on it. Now I mostly don't have much time when I'm packing my painting. So I cut the two sided tape prior to when I pack it. Like I already cut it and I store it. Now inside the box there are sometimes residues so what I do is I just take a transparent tape and I clean the box using that tape. Once you attach thermopore sheet on your box it's very important to pack your painting instantly because otherwise they are going to drop. This way two sided tape will stick nicely and tightly with the box. So what I basically do is I put four pieces on all the sides 
on the base of the box and four pieces on the lid on the inner side of the lid and four pieces on each wall on the sides like one piece on each side then if there is an extra painting that I want to pack inside the parcel I just pack it in a bubble wrap and the one that I've shown here I also have a video on it so if you want to watch that I will link it in the description box then I close it with the masking tape indicating that open here with arrows and don't forget to paste a please don't fold it label with the drawing also we have to attach address label then I take a plastic sheet and this is a double plastic sheet so what I do is I close one end of it with a transparent tape and then I open it and it turns into a huge plastic bag then I put the painting inside it then I just close it with a masking tape so that they can easily find where to open the plastic bag this way they won't damage the plastic sheet then say all your prayers to keep the painting protected because no matter what you do you never know what's going to happen then I close the box with a rope and it's very easy to open and close this rope without destroying it I can never close the rope tightly enough so what I do is I tie the knot and I pull the rope from one side in one direction and from the other side of the box in opposite direction so that it is nice and tight because we don't want the lid to move. This is how the parcel looks like but with my standard post I have to cover it with the white fabric as well so I just make a white cotton fabric bag and I cover the parcel with it and I seal it on the top. The important thing is that you have to write on top of your parcel how many things are in there, who made it, what was the year and I also write uh, the mediums that I used and the total number of things. Don't forget to write address. Your address should be on top and the receiver's address should be on the bottom. I try to write it in a good big font, a clear font. So this was the packing process. Now let's talk about the material a little. The wood that I use, I purchase it from a shop where they sell reclaimed wood and we choose pieces that are lightweight because we don't want the parcel to be heavy but at the same time the wood is very solid so it's really good for the box. Now this reclaimed wood is mostly already been used in shipping in some way maybe in containers or something. There are mostly stamps on these woods indicating that this is a disease free wood so it's a good thing another thing that you have to purchase is a bubble wrap sheet don't buy a bubble wrap sheet from a bookshop that will cost you a lot try to find a shop that sells only bubble wrap rolls and it will save you a lot of money so this is how i pack my paintings and why i pack them like this i hope it will be helpful for you when you're packing next time take care goodbye